All right, in this video, we'll cover how to use your audio cubes in topology mode. Topology mode is the newest and most powerful mode available to us in the MIDI bridge software. And it works sort of as a combination of the sender, receiver, and sensor modes all at the same time. So this means that a single cube can simultaneously be detecting any other cubes that are facing towards it. It can also be sending data to those other cubes, telling it, telling them which face from this cube is facing them. And it can also tell the distance between the two cubes. So there's a lot going on here, and it's a very powerful system that we can use in a lot of different ways. Each cube has four sets of controls, one for each side. And in order to help you orientate yourself, this set of controls at the bottom here corresponds to the side of the, your, your audio cube that has a USB port. In order to look at the controls of a given side of a cube, simply click on the appropriate zoom button. And this will give us a view of all of the data that can be sent to this cube from other cubes. So in this screen, we have a total of 16 possible cubes, which is the maximum number of cubes that can be in a single network. Typically, the first cube in a network is going to be your master cube, and we're not going to be receiving any data from that. It's going to be in the upper left-hand corner here. In addition, this cube is not going to receive any data from itself. Um, in this instance, we're looking at cube 2, so we're not going to receive any data from the second slot here either. We can receive data, however, from all of the other cubes in our network, in this case, cubes 3 and 4. So let's take a moment to see how we can edit the data that we receive from cube 3 whenever it's pointing towards the appropriate face of cube 2. So we can simply click on the note values here, press the backspace button to delete the existing note, and type in the new note that we would like to have in its place. When you're done, you can hit the tab button to quickly proceed to the next note. So when cube 3 is pointed towards the face of cube 2 with the USB port, uh, we'll be receiving notes C, D, E, or F, depending on which side of cube 3 is facing us. In addition to receiving note values from other cubes, we can also receive control change messages. In order to activate this, simply click on the CC button for the appropriate cube, and you can edit the CC values that get sent um, in exactly the same way that you can edit the note values that get sent. So cubes can send note values, control change values, or both at the same time, or neither, to other cubes in the network. In addition, we can also control the color of the LEDs based on the proximity of the cubes. So let's take a look at how this looks. I'll just have the red value of this cube controlled by the proximity of cube 3. So cube 3 is our green one here on the right, and remember we want to point it towards the USB port of cube 2, which is the set of controls that we were just uh, fiddling around with. And you'll see the closer this cube gets to uh, cube 2, the brighter the red color gets. The farther away we move, the darker it gets. And you can see all the data arriving at cube 2 um, in the bottom set of controls that I've highlighted for you. And so this is really useful because it gives us immediate visual feedback on how our cubes are aligned with each other. All right, so in this video, we covered the basics of topology mode, including how it works and how to set up the cubes to communicate with each other in the way that you see fit. In the next video, I'll showcase a project I've made using topology mode in Reactor, which allows you to take all of the incoming MIDI note data and quickly map it to a given key and scale, which allows you to generate harmonic sequences very easily and quickly.